Mute, I'm mute. Okay, sorry, I just now didn't hear me right. Yeah, good. Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Baba Urban Farming Workshop. I'm Jess from Baba MC for tonight. Yeah, happy fa happy Father's Day for all Papa. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome. So all friends on Facebook, welcome to click on the share button and share out our online workshop to your friends now. So today our topic is about how to apply organic fertilizer correctly to your plants. So organic fertilizer is good for our plants and also for our soil. But why sometimes when we use organic fertilizer, it seems doesn't work to your plants. Or sometimes the, fer the fertilizer is very impactful on your friend's garden, but not yours. So is there any special technique is needed to apply organic fertilizer? Or what is the key point when we use organic fertilizer? So tonight, Hans will share with us how to apply organic fertilizer correctly to our plants so everyone can enjoy roaming and fruitful harvest. So before I start, I will have a quick introduction about Baba and Hans. So Baba is a gardening accessory manufacturer from Malaysia. We continuously deliver quality, creative and eco-friendly gardening products to farmers and also gardeners. We focus on developing eco-friendly products and promote organic farming. Planting in organic way is important to conserve our environment. We always share our organic uh, farming method with our farmer and provide training to encourage farmer reduce the usage of toxic chemical. By this, it is good to the farmer and also help to reduce the agrochemical pollution. Through our sharing, we hope could make the farming and urban farming easier for everyone. So fr hi friends who just joined our channel, tonight Hans will share with us how to, how to apply organic fertilizer correctly to your plants. So welcome to click on the, click on the share button and share out our, to, our workshop to your friends. So after, after hand sharing, we will have a Q&A section and you may write down your question in comment anytime. I will read out your question to Hans during Q&A section. And then tonight, we will have Hans as our speaker. He graduated from Iowa State University of US with Bachelor de Honor Degree of Agriculture and Biosystem Engineering. He has more than two years management experience in a 2,000 acres farm in US. He also been trained as organic farmer in Cixing Organic Farm in Taiwan. He been visiting to Malaysia farm and conduct research on organic farming in the past seven years. He, continue, he continuously provides assistance and consultation to local farmer who would like to convert to organic farming. He is familiar with organic and non-pesticide farming practice too. So now let's put our hands together in front of our screen and welcome our speaker of tonight. Welcome, Hans Leong. Hello, good evening everyone. I'm Hans. We meet again here. We really appreciate your time, uh, you spend your time with us uh, to look about the topics today all together. So today we'd like to talk about how to apply organic fertilizer correctly to your plants at home. As you can see from the topics today, we are talking about the application of organic fertilizer for home gardening. However, most part of the contents today also suitable for commercial scale grower. I can safely assume that everyone here knows that the plants need fertilizer. Let us dig into several problems that probably you guys um, probably met before. Let me change. All right. So let us see some problems here. For example, your plants probably experience stunted growth. After like one week, two weeks, three weeks, the plant is still that small. Why? We will look into this. The leaves start to get yellow, okay? And this, what does it mean? What does it show you? We will talk, explain later on. And probably your plants, the leaves grow very well, very green, very large, but it just cannot flower, cannot bear flowers. Why? 
and uh, and your plants get burned because it get over fertilized. So uh, from this uh, from several cases above, we may not know what kind of fertilizer should be applied, how much, how frequent, how to apply. These are all the questions that our friends always PM us in the Facebook. So that's why we think that we can organize the title today. And through this platform today, hopefully we can learn all this together. We can understand the key nutrients required by plants. We can understand the flow of fertilizing a plant. Okay, understand how to fertilize different types of plants how to apply fertilizer correctly in terms of method and frequency and learn to differentiate the symptoms of, the, uh, of basic malnutrition on plants. And now let's talk about the key nutrients for plants. All right, now please remember these three alphabets, N, P, and K. I repeat, N, P, K, N, P, N, K, which represent Nitrogen for N, phosphorus for P, and K for potassium. Let's start from N, nitrogen. So we know that more than 70% of air comprise of nitrogen. However, it cannot be direct absorbed by plants as nutrients. Most of the time, it needs to be converted into form of ions to get absorbed by roots in, uh, in the soil. Nitrogen is the key ingredient to form chlorophyll in leaves. So we see why the leaves are in green color, uh, sorry, are green in color, okay? Because of chlorophyll. And where the chlorophyll comes from, they use, use up the nitrogen. And it also is the key ingredient to form different proteins in plants. Since it can form various proteins in plants, so that's why when we add a little bit of nitrogen, it can add on the milky and creamy texture in fruits. Like for example, you can imagine durian, uh, banana, it tastes like very creamy, very milky, and because it's because of the nitrogen content inside the flesh. And right now, let's talk about phosphorus, P. And usually it existed in the soil as natural, uh, naturally occurring mineral. The function of P, phosphorus, is, as you can see here, this is the root, okay? It helps to stimulate the growth of tips, points, or buds, okay? For example, if you want to grow more tips over here, over the root hair, it needs phosphorus. Similarly to the new bud ring, okay? If you want to grow more ring, new bud ring, then it needs phosphorus. Then for the leaves as well, okay, it, uh, it is used up to form the grower tip, growing tip on the leaves. And also for the flowers, for the fruit buds on trees, you need to use the phosphorus. And what about K, the potassium? Let's imagine the balloon, okay? Just now we talk about the phosphorus, P. If the, the P, uh, uh, the phosphorus P is something like growing a balloon, but the balloon is unblown yet, okay? But, and the K is something like a nutrient to enlarge the balloon, to blow the balloon to become large, okay? Similarly to the trees, okay? We need K to enlarge the growing tips. If we observe, uh, if we observe the process of fruits formation on trees, Firstly, you will see it grows the tips, okay? To grow the tips, it needs phosphorus. But what enlarge the tips to become buds, to become flowers, and eventually become fruits, it needs the potassium. It promotes the flowering and enlarge the fruits. And similarly, happen to the roots. The phosphorus is used to growing the tips, but what is used to enlarge the tips to become root hair? is the potassium. And the potassium is also from the sweetness in fruit. And the more potassium we add, the, it improves the sweetness in, uh, uh, sweetness in fruit. And how do we measure the sweetness in fruit? For example, sometimes we see, uh, we heard that, oh, these, the sweetness of 
the corn is about 12, 13. The watermelon is about 16, 17. Okay, where the value come from? We use the Briggs meter to determine the Briggs level, the, uh, the Briggs level, the sweetness of the fruit. How do we use it? The Briggs meter is very easily to get. You can just purchase it online. Okay, so do like this. We just put a drip of juice. Okay, squeeze a drip of juice, and we see through the bricks lever, a bricks meter, and observe the lever. Let's say the lever is until ten, as we can observe here in the diagram, which means that the bricks lever is ten, and the sweetness is ten as well. And for your reference, the sweetness of Coca Cola is nine to ten. Okay, which means that any fruits of sweetness, uh, the, brick, the bricks level is more than 9 to 10. Okay, the fruits should be sweeter than the Coca-Cola itself then. The potassium is also used to thicken the cell wall and it also helps to increase the woody content inside the plant. So the more potassium we add, the harder the plant is. We, let us draw a short conclusion over here. So we can see here the leaves, when we want the plants to form more leaves, it needs and the nitrogen. When we need the plants to grow more growing tips and the root tips, it needs more phosphorus. But when, when we want to enlarge the tips to become flower, to become fruits, to grow more root hairs, it needs potassium. All right. So now we think about this. What is the conventional method to supplement, to, to replenish the nutrients to the plants. The first choice for the farmers will be the chemical fertilizer. Why chemical fertilizer? Because it's very easy to dissolve in water and directly absorbed by the plants. However, as we know that the chemical fertilizer made from the non-renewable so resources such as petroleum. And the chemical residue is usually non-biodegradable and not able to be assimilated or utilized in nature environments. As according to many research globally, 30% of the chemical fertilizer applied will only be absorbed by the plants. And the other 40% will leach into ground and water system. So what will it cause by these leachates, by this leaching material, uh, caused by the excessive usage of uh, chemical fertilizer. The first thing, the soil will become harder because uh, more and more chemical ions left inside the ground and lack of organic matter inside the ground. So that's why it become rocks, turn back into rocks again. And also it causes eutrophication, which means that it grows a lot of algae and sometimes poisonous algae. And it also caused the death of aquatic life due to this nitrogen and phosphorus leach into the water system. Okay, so when the water system has this kind of algae bloom of the dead fishes, and these water are not safe anymore to be drink. And the remaining 30%, we apply the chemical fertilizer, we emit as greenhouse gases, such as nitrous oxide. Okay, and these greenhouse gases will contribute to global warming. So can we imagine what the, uh, the future might be? Hardened soil, hardly to be cultivated for the plants, let we may lack of clean water and warmer and hotter environment. So our future generations will be the one need to suffer from this, probably not us at this moment. But what if, what if every one of us could do something from small, could start, it, uh, could start it from home, taking from nature and back, back to nature. So unlike farm, our home is small and it may, it's manageable. And we have the right to choose organic fertilizer. It's manageable, safer, cleaner, and organic. All right, let us do, uh, make a short revision over here. MPK are the key nutrients for the plant's growth. Nitrogen N makes the leaves greener and larger. And it also makes the fruits more creamy and milky, like durian or banana. 
And the phosphorus, just like an unblown balloon, it helps to grow more tips, buds, points, or rings. And the potassium, just like the nutrient to blow and enlarge the balloon, it helps to enlarge the flower buds, fruit buds, and root hairs. It helps to enlarge the fruits, increase the fresh contents, and make the fruits sweeter. And it also helps to thicken the cell and make the cell uh, make the plants harder and more woody. And if possible, we should we can choose to apply organic fertilizers to mitigate environmental problem such as soil hardening, eutrophication, and release of greenhouse gases. All right, now we come to the next part: how to fertilize a plant. Let us uh, let us look at this process flow. So in the beginning. Uh, starting stage of growing, we need to prepare soil, we need to prepare bait to grow. And during soil or bait preparation, we can apply what something what we call base fertilizer. And after that, after, let's say one week after germination or transplanting a young plant, we can put boosting fertilizer, we can boost the parts of the plant. Okay, this is what we call top dress fertilizer. And after that, uh, after harvest, when we want to go to the new growing cycle and we need to go back to this soil and bed preparation, we can put the base fertilizer again. So now let's talk about the soil or bed preparation. During this stage, we can mix 20 to 30% of marker ready compost or self-made compost with the planting media, okay? So for those uh, who use pots uh, to grow the plant, Okay, I really recommend suggesting uh, doing this, okay? Because the compost is something like a milk powder for the plant, okay? It provides the most comprehensive nutrients and necessary minerals to the plant. So this milk powder will be absorbed quickly by the young plants we grow. And if possible, we may look for plant-based or plant source compost. As the plant-based compost, it does not contain animal dung, it will be safer and better uh, from, uh, from several harmful bacteria. You will not touch this harmful bacteria, for example, Salmonella, uh, E. coli, Pseudomonas, and else, okay? For example, this compost is made from the plant material such as sugarcane, mushroom beggars, rice bran, oil palm weights, and so on, the plant material. And it needs to turn every day by the machine because we can make sure that more and more oxygen is being mixed inside the compost to facilitate the composting process. And this compost is being fermented for four months and above so that we can make sure that all the materials inside are fully composted. By applying compost with the, uh, with the media, which we use no, no, uh, no matter what kind of media. Could be simple as the yellow soil, the sand, or could be uh, mixed with the uh, mixed with the uh, potting media, uh, specialized potting media, okay? We can mix those composts so that it can help to give, uh, uh, su uh, sorry, supplement the organic matter inside the soil, the beneficial microbes inside the soil to protect your roots, okay? And also, it also helps to provide the comprehensive nutrients. All right, so after the soil and bait preparation, we can start to boost the plant. And it really depends on which part of plants you want to boost for harvest. For example, for leafy vegetables, what we want to eat? We want to eat the leaves. So we want to boost the leaves. That's why it requires more nitrogen because the nitrogen is the key source to form, to form a larger and greener leaves. So that's why when we look at the packaging of the fertilizer, look for the nutrient analysis and it will list down all the nutrient content inside this fertilizer, okay? For example, in this case, we can see that the nitrogen, it has 5%, phosphorus 3%, potassium 2%. So which one is higher in ratio? The N, the N ratio is higher. So that's why is this fertilizer is suitable to boost the leaves. So we always look for the nutrient that is higher in ratio. All right, 
right? For uh, take another example, for example, the cocoa beets, the squash, the vines, uh, including the pumpkins, the bitter cod, the uh, the grapes. Okay, fall under this part, and then the tubers, like for example, the carrots, the tapioca, the uh, the the uh, whatever grows in uh, as a root. Okay, we eat the roots. Uh, ginseng also. All right, and also the single flower fruits, for example, the pineapple, the banana. What we need to boost is the fruit or roots, okay? But usually these kind of vegetables grows very few flowers. So that's why it needs only K, potassium. So when we look for the fertilizer, we should look for those fertilizer which has higher K uh, ratio in K. It will be suitable for uh, for boosting the fruits or the roots. And let's take another example like the fruit trees. Okay, you can see the durian, uh, the rambutan, the uh, dragon fruit, and so on. Okay, the tropical fruits. And we can see that the fruit trees usually bear a lot of flowers, then the flowers turn into the fruits. So what we need to boost is the flowers because it needs to grow more flowers and the fruits. Okay, so it needs more phosphorus and potassium. So when we look for the fertilizers, we need to look for those uh, re uh, higher ratio in P and K so that it can grow more buds and fruits. Let us look at some scenarios of application. For example, this case, the leafy vegetables. During the soil preparation, we can mix the soil with the compost, okay? And one week after seed germination of or transplant, we can start to apply organic fertilizer with higher N ratio. And usually we apply once a week. And for small pot, the small pot is uh, with the diameter in between 12 to 15 cm. We just only need to apply one teaspoon. But for a tray like this, it needs to apply two handful of organic fertilizer. And after harvest, Okay, then we need to prepare the soil again, then we mix with compost again, and these repeat the cycle like this. Very easy. Okay, let's come to the fruit, uh, fruiting vegetables, uh, especially for those uh, one-time harvest. For example, the corns, uh, the, the bitter gourd, okay, and many and so on. That is only one-time harvest or two times like edamame. All right, so... Uh, when we prepare the soil, similarly, we just mix with compost and one week after germination or transplant, we can just uh, start to apply the boosting fertilizer. We apply organic, organic fertilizer with higher in N so that it can start to grow more leaf in the, in the uh, starting phase. So just apply once a week, one handful for the pot greater than uh, 30 cm diameter. And after one month, when it starts flowering, we need to change into applying organic fertilizer with high K, okay? Similarly, once a week, one handful. So just think about this. If we don't change to the fertilizer with high K, we just simply applying high N. What will happen to the plants? The plants will only just keep growing leaves it will not flower. Okay, that's the case. And let's look, uh, look at the third case. For those repeatedly uh, harvesting crops, like fruit trees, the chilies, we can just like, pluck the chilies and it grow new leaves and it, we can keep harvesting the eggplants similarly. So after first time harvest, we need to take turn applying the fertilizer with high end to grow new leaves and uh, and also take turn to apply the fertilizer with high K or high P and K to grow more roots or grow more buds, okay? Just take turn once a week or we can mix both together to, to apply together because after first time harvest, it needs to continuously uh, grow more new leaves and then grow more new fruits, okay? Just the cycle like this. All right, so we come to what is the correct way to apply the fertilizer. All right, there are three tips, okay, to, uh, to apply the fertilizers. Firstly, 
do not apply close to the base of the stem because that's the basically the main root structure of the plant and is very sensitive. Secondly, apply in the area in between uh, the base of the stem and the edge of the leaves. Okay, later I will show the diagram to explain a little bit more detail and cover with soil after applying organic fertilizer. For example, this leafy vegetables. Okay, as we can see, uh, we, 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 we don't apply the fertilizer at the base of the stem. That's why I highlight this with red area. Okay, we observe where is the age of the leaves. So the, this age of the leaves, it means that how far the roots have grown. Okay, so we just apply in between this area. Okay, you see the green area over here? We just apply in this. Okay, for example, the corn plants, as we can see, we just don't apply the fertilizer at this base area. And we observe the age of the leaves, which means that the root will grow until this area. And we just apply in the green area, the area in between. All right, for this fruit tree, okay, so we don't apply this part and we see the age of the leaves and we apply at the area in between, all right? So you can see the green area is exactly which area we need to apply. Regarding the application technique, we can either dig a hole, okay, and, bur and put the fertilizer and bury with the soil. This is what we call the hole application. And we can do uh, the row application as well, okay? Just in between the vegetables, we can just draw a drain, a line, okay, and put the fertilizer in between and close with the soil. And for the fruit trees, we can just do ring broadcasting, which means that uh, you can just simply broadcasting, okay, in anywhere you want, okay, but just don't apply in uh, close to the base of the stem, okay. So this is what we can do and why we need to cover the organic fertilizer with soil. Like for synthetic fertilizers, it can easily absorb, uh, sorry, it dissolves in water and absorbed by the plant. But for organic fertilizers, it needs to be broken down by the microbes, okay, and turn into nutrients and absorbed by the plant. So, uh, so that's why, that's why when we cover with soil, we need to make sure that the microbes inside the soil can eat the fertilizer and start to break down. But for some cases, if you, if you find, if, uh, find it very hard to bury the fertilizer with soil, you can just sprinkle with water and until it's wet enough and initiate the uh, breaking down process by the microbes. And hereby, I list down some symptoms of plant malnutrition. So whenever you see these symptoms, it means that your plants probably don't have enough nutrient or you may not apply enough fertilizer for the plant. Just put this in mind, okay? Look at this image. You see the leaves is very green. Uh, the leaves are green, okay? These are the healthy leaves, okay? Put this in mind. So what are the symptoms when the plant lack of nitrogen? All right, it starts to get yellow from the oldest leaf. As you can see here, the, the first, the most bottom leaves start to get yellow, okay? And similarly to the tomato plants, okay, the right-hand side is the healthy tomato and the left-hand side uh, shows you the lack of nitrogen. So these tomato plants, as you can see, the uh, starting from the oldest part of the leaf and it starts to grow more yellow and more yellow to upwards, okay, it means that uh, this plant lack of nitrogen and this plant probably start to get old faster if we just ignore it like that. How about those plants lack of P phosphorus? Okay, the plant will become purple. The old leaves will become purple in color and the plants tend to get small. We call it dwarf plants. Sometimes we observe the stem will become purple in color. It means that momentarily, that moment, okay, it lack of phosphorus, okay? And like, as you can see here, the leaves, the old leaves become purple. 
similarly to this plant, this strawberry plant, the old leaves become purple as well. So purple is the symptom of malnutrition, uh, sorry, uh, nutrient deficiency of phosphorus. And what about those uh, lack of K, potassium? We can observe the leaf here. Lack of potassium, the oldest leaf will start to get yellow as well, but yellow from the age of old leaves, you can see here. The age of the old leaves, okay? Similarly to the tomato plant, you can see it start to uh, become yellow from the age of old leaves, okay? Similarly to this okra, you can see age of the leaves become yellow or burns, okay? It shows the sign of burn, brown or yellowing. And what about over fertilize the plant, okay? The plant will get burned, okay? If we just uh, over fertilize, okay? Similarly to this plant, you can see the sign symptoms of getting burned, okay? And that's why we can choose organic fertilizer because instead of putting the chemical fertilizer, we, can, we cannot estimate what is the right amount because it dissolves so fast and just get absorbed by the plant. For organic fertilizer, it takes time to, uh, to be broken down by the microbes and absorbed by the plant. The buffer, the risk buffer is much higher than the chemical fertilizer. By, by applying organic fertilizer, we can create and maintain healthy soil with beneficial animals and microbes. The soil should be loose and black or dark brown in color and full and probably full of beneficial insects or unseen uh, beneficial microbes. You may witness some beneficial animals existing in your organic soil. And please don't get scared or worried because they usually help to work uh, better inside your soil environment. For example, some, uh, probably some common animals or uh, beneficial commonly seen are, like for example, this one, the earthworm, spring tear, soy mites, fungus net, and tardigrades, or what we call the water bear, okay? So these, all these living things, the animals help to break down the organic matter into plant nutrient, and the plant nutrient, and, uh, and your plants will absorb this nutrient. But I know that some of the people just uh don't like uh don't like to see all these animals so what we can do we can just cover the organic fertilizer into the soil and all these process will only happen inside the soil okay if you're really unsure of these uh these organisms or these living things are good for your soil or not it may take a picture and pm to us again and then we will help you to identify so by applying org uh, organic fertilizer your hardened soil will start to gradually become loosened, okay? To become black in color, to be to become better in, uh, to become better in, uh, in, uh, in many properties, okay? Your soil become fertile and become black in color. And this is what we want to see for our soil. All right, so let us take, uh, draw us a conclusion over here. How to fertilize the plant? We can mix the compost with potting media, any kind of potting media, okay, during soil preparation. And we can boost the plants with top dress organic fertilizer with particular higher N, P or K ratio. And usually it's ne it needs to be applied once a week uh, for home gardening. And precautions while applying fertilizers, we just don't apply at the area close to the base of the stem apply at the area between the base of the stem and the edge of the leaves and cover the fertilizers with soil after application for better breakdown and nutrient release and identify the plant nutrient uh, plant nutrient deficiency of n p or k through observing the color change of the leaves especially the old leaves still remember the n is yellowing of the leaves the p the leaves will become purple and the k the yellowing starts from the age, okay, of the old leaves. And we can choose and apply organic fertilizer to conserve the soil environment and preserve the better soil health. All right, so all these are available in this packing. So if you're, if you're really interested where you can buy, you can buy it from uh, the major garden centers or online platforms such as uh, Lazada, Shopee and else. 
All right, that's it. Thank you very much. And here I I close my sharing section over here. Now I pass the time to Jess. Hi, thanks Hans for the interesting uh, sharing. So tonight, actually our live is uh, on live in at the same time on three page. Baba Gardening, Baba Gardening uh, International and Hijawan Baba. So there's a lot of questions coming in. So for those uh, audience, if you have any question regarding tonight topics, welcome to uh, send in your, uh, write on your comment, uh, write on your question on the comment side. And then before we proceed to our, our Q&A section, so did all audience have you click the share button and share out Hans sharing for tonight? Is it all the information sharing just now is interesting and have is helpful for you to diagnose what happened to your plants? Because just now got a friend, he said that he need the diagram that you shared just now, the, the plants that lack of nutrients or the lack of the, the, the symptom of lack of the NPK. So is it possible to share on a page later, Hans? Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah, if you can, if you can show the the uh, on the page and for for better understanding that would be very good no problem okay so later on we will post on the diagram on our facebook page okay so from the sharing just now we know that organic fertilizer is always the better choice for our environment and also for our plants in the long terms so uh there is a question regarding in in the previous workshop has you have uh teach us how to diy our enzyme so yep. does this enzyme contain the NPK? Yes, actually, actually, uh, actually, this uh, this enzyme we the time we talk about okay, we can make into high amino uh, enzyme higher in N and high uh, and also the fruit enzyme higher in K. Okay, so these enzymes serve as a quick uh, quick supplement of nutrient for the plants. Okay, but if you want to uh, want to provide the nutrient in long term, as the food like the food we eat every day, then we, we need to apply the uh, organic fertilizer to the ground. Okay. Oh, so because the enzyme we are using every time the portion that the portion of the raw mat that we use for do, uh, DIY the enzyme might be different. So it's quite difficult for us to mention the digit of the MP, the content of oh, the MPK. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and also, yes. um, is it we could, we should alternate, uh, could we try alternate, like one week we put the enzyme, the liquid folia, uh, or the enzyme, and another week we put on uh, organic fertilizer. Is it we have to put on alternate week or how is the sequence? Okay, usually, uh, usually for the leafy vegetables, uh, uh, leafy vegetables are not need uh, doing so uh, unless the unless the harvest is very low due to the cloudy uh, cl uh, cloudy day. Okay, so we just uh, uh, apply a little bit of enzyme to supplement a little bit. Okay, but for those repeatedly harvest crop, okay, we need to apply organic fertilizer on ground. At the same time, we also need to spray the enzyme on leaf. Okay, then it will help to uh lengthen uh lengthen the harvesting uh, period mm -hmm. okay so just now we uh has got keep on mention the four two six and then the uh five three two so here here is it uh because mm -hmm. some 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 audience they get confused that what is the why there is always four two six five three two so oh, okay. uh, most of the time when we go to garden center, when we look for the when we look for the fertilizer, you will always see that the fertilizer name is followed with the digit. So the digit yeah. is referred to the NPK content of the fertilizer. So uh, so when we understand the this three the meaning of this three digit, is it we have always go for the highest digit? For example, our uh, fruit is it? The K, I always need to pick the highest one, or how should we choose the correct uh, uh, fertilizer that's suitable for my plants? Uh, usually, 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 uh, usually we if fruiting, then we just 
Okay, for the first month, we or, just apply. Or is it? Or is it? We have to. Uh, we have the way to. Uh, differentiate which which kind is uh, organic fertilizer, or is it we just go for the highest NPK? Okay, if you really want to choose uh the organic fertilizer, always look for the organic matter, the content of organic matter, which it needs to be more than fifty percent. Means that organic matter is the organic fiber content. Okay, inside the fertilizer. Okay, so if more than five fifty percent, it means that uh the things we apply to the ground, okay, after breaking after breaking down uh into nutrients, the remains will become fiber to make your soil loosen. Okay, that's the purpose of organic fertilizer. We need to look for the organic uh organic matter. Okay, so that's the that's the main difference between uh chemical fertilizer because chemical fertilizer don't have any organic matter. Okay, so do it means that if the if the fertilizer is organic, it will have mentioned how many percent of the organic matter on the packaging. Yes, it needs to be. Yeah. Okay, so when we go, when we choose for the fertilizer, we can refer always refer to the packaging. We should uh, we have to, uh, we could understand more regarding what we are used in the in our gardens. So if yeah. uh the yeah. Okay, so okay, so this is the question regarding uh how regular potting soil oh uh, is the potting soil that we newly bought is already with enough nutrients or every time we have to add on extra compost. Usually, uh, usually you need to refer to the packaging. If the packaging itself does not mention any compost content inside, then we need to premix it with. Uh, with compost, that will be better. But if the potting mix already mentioned that I is already being mixed, pre-mixed with the compost, then we need need not to add more compost inside. That will be okay. Mm, okay. So does the com compost will cause the plants burns like the fertilizer? As long as okay, as long as uh, as long as the compost is fully composted, okay, and we do not add, uh, add more than 20 to 30 percent of compost inside the soil then i think it's good enough okay okay then how about the what is the difference between uh, the uh, plant-based compost versus the whammy compost is this same function oh. okay actually it's almost the same function just that it's being produced uh produced uh, in different ways so uh, so the wormy compost, as we know that is being produced by the earthworms, okay, earthworm casting, okay. This earthworm casting actually has helped to uh, break down the organic matter into available nutrients, okay. So if we can get the wormy compost, of course, we can add it inside the soil, no problem, if it's very good as well. Uh, the plant-based compost is the same. It's already being broken down into available nutrients, just like the earthworm casting. We can mix inside the soil. It depends on uh, which kind of compost uh, is, which is more accessible to you. Okay, and mm -hmm. that's my comment. Okay, then how do we know that we have to add on the compost? Okay. Uh, my recommendation, okay, Any is timing or you wait the plants tell you, <laughs> wait uh, the actually, plants show the symptom and tease you. <laughs> okay, actually, actually, uh, actually, we just add the compost, uh, when we want to, uh, grow another cycle of the fruit crops. Okay, for example, after have I harvest one time of the leafy vegetables, okay, I need to grow new, uh, another new cycle again. Then during the soil preparation, just, then I just uh, put, add on the compost, okay? But if let's say the fruit trees, okay? If let's say those repeatedly harvest crop like chili, the uh, chili, uh, the eggplants, okay, you can just uh, keep harvesting, okay? I can rec I recommend that after you trim the plants, okay? You prune the plants, you just apply a little bit of compost to the ground. It will help to uh, make the plants recover faster. Okay, this is my comment. And also there is a specific timing where you, after you did the harvest. 
Yep. Then uh, uh, after the, the harvest, then will be the good timing for us to add on the compost, right? Because during yep. the fruiting and uh, and the fruiting season, he the the plants will absorb a lot of the trace element and the nutrients from the yep. soil. So this will be the yep. good time to add on the compost uh, after harvest. Info yep. The the best time is before the plant showing any symptom to you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then next we will have some questions regarding uh, fertilizer. So, how useful is shell, shell make eggshell powder, banana skin powder, and coffee enzyme? Mm, how, could it, could, how, use, uh, how useful is uh, shell make eggshell powder, banana skin powder, and coffee enzyme. It, this, uh, it could replace the compost or replace the fertilizer? Mm, okay. Uh, probably not that much unless, unless, in, unless the coffee powder, the eggshell, uh, they mix together in a certain uh, what we call the carbon-nitrogen ratio. Okay. Doing the compost, in, it requires a certain range of carbon, uh, carbon nitrogen ratio. Okay, then it needs to be fully composted for more than two months. Then uh, it will be become a very good uh, base fertilizer used as a compost fertilizer, base fertilizer. Okay, hmm. but if we just directly apply like that, and probably that's not good enough for the plant, uh, because it's uh, probably uh, uh, more what we call the the, it's more salty, okay, in the sense that the EC is quite high, and then it's not good for the plant's health, okay? Okay, then next question is, what is your opinion on combining inorganic with organic fertilizer? So maybe reduce half amount of the inorganic fertilizer and apply with organic fertilizer. So which one is recommended? Or uh, is it okay in this way, like mix half and half? Okay. Okay, if uh, okay, I think if you are willing to start uh, to start reducing half of the chemical fertilizer and use and uh, exchange with uh, organic fertilizer, I think this is the good start. Okay, good start action. Okay, because uh, because uh, this will help to gradually uh, change the soil structure. Okay, to become uh, to become better and sustainable, healthy soil. Okay, then after that, probably you reduce a little bit furthermore. Like for example, instead of 50%, you reduce up to 60%, 70%, 80%. And probably after that, you can change to fully organic. And that's okay too. Okay, it depends on you. Okay, but I, but I really, uh, but I will, I will really be happy that, oh, you start from reducing half. Mm -hmm. Okay, then that will be good. Okay. Okay. And then uh, how to apply, because just now uh, you got mentioned that uh, when we put on the compost or fertilizer, we need to keep certain distance uh, with the uh, with the yep. trunk or main, main branch. So yep. if we plant it on a pot, so what is the different, uh, what is the distance? Okay, as long as in between, uh, in between, you, let's say, when the young plant or the seed, the seedling is very small, okay, we can apply, okay, uh, you see where the leaf edge, okay, it just apply to the edge of the leaf, then that will be good enough. Because, because the edge will... is grown over, over the plant, the, the pots already. The pots is uh, here, but the leaf already grow over. <laughs> oh, okay, then that is fine. Then if, let's say the plant is so big like, like that, okay, yeah. then just... Okay, then don't then as long as you don't apply to the base, okay, you just uh just further away a little bit from the base of the stem, then that will be good enough. Okay, I I couldn't I couldn't say a specific distance, probably five cm. Okay, probably eight cm. Okay, as long as it's further a little bit from the base, then that will be good enough. Oh, why we cannot uh, put the fertilizer too near to the main branch or because, the trunk? Okay, because uh, no matter the chemical fertilizer, okay, 
if you put the chemical fertilizer close to the base of the stem, you see the base of, you see these, the stem here, and then there is a main root system over here. Okay, so this part is very sensitive. Then if chemical fertilizer and then the chemical direct absorb, uh, dissolve in water, it will start to, uh, start to uh, injure, injure the, the main root system. Yeah. Okay, but for the organic fertilizer, same, uh, same too is, although it's not dissolved in water, but the breaking down process happened in this region, probably it will injure a little bit uh, the main root system as well. Okay, so need to be further a little bit and we need to let the root hair doing the job, not the main root system. You get what I mean? Ah. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. So, uh, and then the next question will be, uh, I think it's a very common or major problem that annoying people, uh, annoying those who use organic fertilizer. They yep. ask that how to get rid of fungus genai or and the oh, white uh. insect because they always found that after they apply some organic fertilizer they will have this type of problem it and also okay. does this uh insect bring any harm uh, will it harm or bring bring any damage to our plants okay. yeah two questions this... first is how okay. to get rid and then second does they they are good they are friends or enemy okay so okay uh, let me let me say uh, say in this way the fungus net okay actually uh no matter what kind of organic fertilizer we use okay it will attract a little bit uh a little bit of fungus net okay so the adult is a black fly flying around uh the the plant so what we can do is uh we we can bury the organic fertilizer inside the the soil or we can top up, uh, we can always top up a little bit thin layer of sand, okay, on top because uh, because uh, fungus snack is attracted to the moist. So if we put a thin layer of sand on top, it, the top layer dry out faster and then uh, the fungus snack won't get attracted. And the third way we can do is we can, uh, we can put a little bit uh, uh, like one or two sticks of yellow sticky trap okay to trap the black fly flying around okay mm -hmm. so that they won't lay egg or uh, so, so that they, they won't uh they won't uh, lay the children okay inside the ground then that will be fine as well okay all right then we come to the second question is it harmful or uh, or beneficial it depends okay some of the article saying uh, it's still controversial but Actually, I uh, but actually, uh, the fungus net will only be attracted to uh, the what what we call the decaying parts of the uh, decaying parts de decaying organic matter. Okay, which means that if the fungus net tends to eat your roots, okay, probably it shows that the your plants uh, is not healthy anymore, and then it start to eat the plant's roots. Okay, but uh, but the fungus net, will, if you have uh, organic fertilizer or the compost inside the soil, it will help to break down, eat the organic matter and break down to become the poops and the poops will be absorbed by the plant. Okay, so that's the difference. Okay, we can, we can re reduce okay. that. Of course, it depends on your preference, okay? But most of, but most of the time, the, the people just that won't uh, just ignore it, okay? Just uh, ignore it like, because uh, yeah. since soil is uh, is considered home for yeah. those insects, right? And then yeah, how yeah, about because... millipedes? Oh, millipedes, yes. Millipedes is friend or enemy? Uh, actually, it's friend. Okay, oh. I know a lot. Of, I know a lot of people don't like millipede, but millipede is actually a friend. Uh, it's it works like something like a uh, uh, the the earthworm. It eats the decaying organic matter and come out with the poops and the poops will be absorbed by the plants. Okay, so when you see the millipedes or whatever the just now we talk about the fungus net, when you see all these creatures inside the soil, it shows that okay your uh your 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 soil probably get too moist. Okay, and it attracts all these creature inside the soil. So what we can do is we can uh just now I say uh we put a top layer of the sand to let it dry faster on the top layer. It won't get moist. 
okay or we can choose the better uh, the soil with better drainage because when we once we water and the water will drain away and it won't get moist and then uh, the this creature won't come to okay okay so uh, there is some question that we have to we, i will go back to uh, some question regarding the fertilizer so when yeah. we apply organic fertilizer it's recommended to cover with a thin layer of soil then how about when we apply bone meal or chicken manure same similarly all these organic things better cover with soil okay because we need to make sure that all these uh, all these substance need to be broken down by the microbes inside the soil first, okay? Mm -hmm. And then better to be covered by soil, uh, covered with soil. Mm, okay. So, uh, what? How to differentiate between the the plants get burned because of fertilizer or the plants get burned because of the sun? Oh, it could be. It could be both. It could be both. Is it, is okay. it the symptom will look alike? The symptom yeah, we'll look, on the plants? Yes, we will we'll somehow look alike. Yes. Yes, but but in Malaysia or Singapore, hardly the, the plants will get burned. Okay. Because uh because our weather here is quite moist. Okay. Unless you mm. apply something else. Lah, eh? But uh but you always can send us the picture and then we will ask you some questions and to determine whether is uh is it's being over fertilized or being or get sunburned okay or could be other other reason as well okay okay and then there's a uh, okay that because due to the uh, uh, time limit so now i i go to the last question this, i think this question is uh this question is quite good and i think this term is confused uh quite a lot of people confusing too so the question is Compost and fertilizer have always been used interchange. Means uh, sometimes they will say that this is compost and this is fertilizer. So it is quite confusing. Actually, what is the difference between the compost and fertilizer? Because sometimes they will say, oh, this is compost-based fertilizer. So mm -hmm. actually, what is the, is there any difference between the compost and fertilizer and consumer, how they should differentiate? Okay, so uh what i okay i can differentiate in this one uh organic fertilizer is a big family okay compost <laughs> is falling under organic fertilizer as well oh, okay so okay. organic organic fertilizer is a big family okay so compost is one of the organic fertilizer okay then what what about just now we talk about 532 426 258 all these all these fertilizer what are they Okay, these are what we call the top dress fertilizer or organic, organic, uh, uh, what we call organic functional fertilizer, which means that it's being, uh, it's being composted and add in more uh, nutritional material, for example, the rock mineral, the bone meal or other things else. Okay, and then to make it more functional to be uh, particularly higher in certain, uh, certain nutrient. Okay. So this is what we call organic functional fertilizer. Okay. So basically compost is the starting stage. Okay. We just apply compost into the ground as a base fertilizer, as a milk powder for the plants. And when we want to boost certain part of the plant, then we apply organic functional fertilizer. Okay. Or the top dress fertilizer. These are the difference. But organic fertilizer is a big group, <laughs> a big family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or could I make it simple is Fertilizer is main cause for the plants. And then yeah. compost is extra with like human. We need to uh, make, we, every day we need to have the main cause. And then we need to take some vitamin. Uh, yeah. Oh, the oh, compost is actually the appetizer. Oh, compost is the appetizer or with, with extra vitamin for us. So yeah. it, it, could, it couldn't be like replace each other because they have the different, different function right yeah so we make yep. it this uh ho hopefully can get uh, uh audience could get more better understanding regarding the compost and fertilizer yes yes okay. yes so this is our q and a section for tonight I there's, I there's a lot of question i yeah i can uh, see i can to, see i can see a lot of up. questions over here but uh but let us try and then to reply you guys uh, after this 
after after this. Okay, so there's a lot. Uh, uh, some question. Uh, you have uh, mentioned very specifically like uh ginger. How to uh what fertilizers would you for ginger, hibiscus, rose? For this type, uh, you, I always welcome you to PM us your plant's picture. So that we could, depends on your con plant condition, then we could suggest better. So uh, we normally we need two pictures from you regarding your inquiry. First, first is a near a very near picture regard on the on the parts which have issue or have any symptom. And another picture is you need to take from far. So our 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 colleague could see the whole plants. So we we know that how is the actual condition so that we can provide a more accurate uh, suggestion regarding your uh, condition. Yes. 